Aho, Kimen Wepamate. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to Sock Talk. Sock Talk is the official podcast of the Sack and Fox Nation. Today's episode was recorded in September of 2019 and features a conversation between our principal chief, Justin Wood, and the director of our language program, Katie Thompson. For more information about the Sack and Fox Nation, please visit our website at Sack and Fox Nation. Dash NSN dot gov. And be sure to follow us on Facebook at Sac Fox Nation. Aho. Wineo Nako. Welcome to Sock Talk. I am Chief Justin Wood, and with me today is Katie Thompson. And welcome, Katie. Katie is the director of our language department. Hi, pleasure to be on here. Well, thank you for being here. I will tell you a little bit about what Sock Talk is going to be. Once a week, we'll have a guest from the Second Fox Nation, whether it be a tribal member or a director of a department or another BC member, to visit about things that are going on with uh, with the tribe and within our tribal jurisdiction and around around the country with our tribal members. So I'm going to ask Katie to tell us a little bit about what she does at the Second Fox Nation. Well, I'm the director of the Sock Language Department, and we are currently a staff of four people. Um, some of the things that we do is we provide language materials. We get a lot of requests from tribal members. Um, we reach out to different schools and visit high schools and Head Start programs. And we meet with the Head Start program uh, twice a week in Cushing, Shawnee, and Stroud. Um, we also do programs with the high school in the springtime where we meet with eight different schools once a week um, where they compete in a soft language bowl and then they also compete at the Oklahoma Native American Youth Language Fair at Norman. Um, that's an example of a couple of things that we do. Um, we also will be working on doing employee classes coming up in October. Alright, so tell me a little bit about the language festival that you had last week. Did we yeah, last weekend was the fourth annual Our Languages Festival. That was started four years ago with the Oklahoma Humanities Grant. Uh, the purpose of this was to uh, invite all of the Algonquian tribes through the United States to come and visit and then share in our culture and language. Um, what we do each year is we invite the tribes to come out that are in the United States and we come together and on the first day we focus on language and we try to provide workshops and presentations that might help other tribes and um, what they're doing with their language programs and they have language programs, answer any questions and just kind of help each other out uh, since the camaraderie is important in what we're doing. The second day is cultural based where we offer classes on how to do um, cultural crafts that most tribes share. Uh, last year and this year as well, we did moccasin making, finger weaving um, that you see in yarn belts. Um, we did something new this year where we did uh, dice carving and that's something that a lot of tribes do is the um, bull and dice games. So. Tell me about, so how long have you been director? I've been director for almost three years now, but I've been a part of the program for almost 10 years. So tell me about the, the beginning, when you decided that you wanted to learn our language and learn your culture mm -hmm. in a new way. And you're, you're Sack and Fox. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody that's watching this knows that Katie's Sack and Fox, mm -hmm. she's a member of this tribe. So tell, us, tell me about why you decided to get involved in the beginning and then why you decided to come to work for the nation. Okay, well I started in high school, I was taking community classes and I lived in Cushing. Um, I'm Sack and Fox, but growing up I didn't hear the language and I didn't know that we still had fluent speakers. Um, so I was going to the classes in high school once a week and I found that I had a knack for the words and I liked the way it sounded. And then um, when I started my first year of college, um, that summer between my first and second year of college, they offered an internship uh, with the soft language program and started working with uh, two fluent speakers, Christine Williamson and Maxine Cobb, and really just taking off with it and using an immersion technique. And I really enjoyed it and I just, they couldn't get rid of me and just kind of stuck around. So um, in the first year I was doing full-time college courses and then taking uh, class loads like Monday, Wednesday, Friday and then spending Tuesdays and Thursdays here working at the soft language department. Um, and after a while I was 
kind of getting difficult, uh, my workload and my school load, so I made the decision to um, go ahead and put college off to the side. I thought that it would be more important to work with the fluent speakers uh, while we had time with them, and college is always going to be there. So uh, I was really glad that I got to do that because I was able to become conversational fluent. So tell me about your time with fluent speakers. Yeah, just the experience of doing that. It was a lot different than what it is now as being a director. Um, it was, it didn't even feel like a job. I, I would joke with um, Jacob, who was the previous director um, at times, where he would give us tasks or goals, and he'd be like, you reach this goal when it comes to learning language. And I was, I didn't even know that we were really working towards something, because for me, it was a dream job because I would get to come to work and spend, you know, three to six hours a day speaking nothing but song. Um, it was incredible. I got to uh, get to know Christine and Maxine, um, and I don't think I would have ever had the opportunity to learn the language if it weren't for them. And they're, you know, elderly ladies. They're in their 80s at the time, and you know, they took time out to come up here and work with me. So I just was really dedicated and really on board with it. So when we're talking to the people, tribe members or community members that are watching this with us, and we say, I say, Nimuwapit, which means good morning, mm -hmm. right? So I'm learning a few words here and there. Right. And so when, when I say that, I've, I've been trying to teach my kids, I mean, I say the words I know, I'll say to my kids, I'm trying to teach them as I'm learning. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of talk about immersion and, and uh, how to work that as we learn a few words here and there? Right, yeah, so immersion is the best technique that you can use for learning a language, and what immersion means is just putting a situation, or putting someone in a situation where they hear nothing but the contact language. Um, ideally, it would be best for someone to go ahead and travel to another country where they hear that language. If you wanna learn how to speak Spanish, you would go to um, South America and immerse yourself in that situation, but we can't really do that. So we had to create our own environment where uh, Jacob did a really good job with that. The previous director, he uh, designated this area in the learning center where there was no English allowed whatsoever. So um, I remember there's a couple times um, where I would, in the beginning, I would speak English and he would kick me out for the day, so I'd have to go and leave and, and you know, not come back until I was able to only speak sock. And um, I remember this one time, I was so frustrated with him and he, I just wasn't understanding what he wanted from me and we were in an argument and I kept, he kept repeating this sentence and I didn't understand him. So I was going like, no, and shaking my head and I was mad, I was like, no, and I, he was trying to tell me something to do, and then I didn't realize it, but I was saying awkward. You know, I wasn't even speaking English, and I didn't realize it, but I was just so defiant at times. So he had to put up with a lot. But um, going back to your question, um, especially with young children, it's the easiest time for them. Um, the easiest time to learn language is four or five years old. So it, I always encourage people if they have small children, you know, um, speak to them. It's it's nothing to them. It's it goes in so easily. Um, so my my three year old woke me up this morning saying and we walk and it yeah. was really cool. And yeah. she says it, and then she'll say good morning afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think it's I mean it's really it, it's really a neat experience for me to get to do that with her and mm -hmm. with my other three kids. And and uh, we uh, we've been talking about that process and learning more about our culture and tradition. That's what you do every day mm -hmm. is you get to work with people talking about our culture, our tradition and our, our language, mm -hmm. which, so talk a little bit about the importance of preserving those and how important it is for young people that within our tribe right now to learn the language mm -hmm. and to practice that language in life. I think it's, I think it's good for me to um, be honest with people and tell them that when I was growing up, I wasn't immersed in the culture and I wasn't immersed in language. You know, I didn't hear you know, only but a few words that everybody knew, and I didn't know that there were still fluent speakers, but I want to serve as an example for people, especially younger people. I really try to pay attention to, um, you know, teenagers and um, young people and just let them know that there's someone here for them um, and not to feel discouraged because a lot of times I hear um, a lot of people say things like, um, like there's shame behind their voice, like, well, I wasn't raised in this 
or I didn't know, you know, this language, or I don't know what my name means, but the fact that they're coming around, it, that's what matters. You know, it's never too late to want to know who you are and, you know, some words. Um, I just, I think it's important because we are the generation that is going to bring it back, you know. Um, our elders, they're taking good care of it, but they're not always going to be around, and that was never true for me to realize um, until Maxine, one of the fluent speakers, passed away, and um, everything changed since then, so I just have a, a appreciation and a very strong sense of duty um, to continue work with this. Um, Do you know how many fluent speakers we currently have? Uh, less than five. Less than, mm -hmm. so less than five fluent speakers. Mm -hmm. And it's possible, now we won't have any more first language speakers, mm -hmm. right? But it's possible to have many people that can speak fluently, right? If we get enough people within the program that are interested, is, is it possible to, to build our language back up again and have more fluent speakers? Is that your goal? It's a goal. It'll take time. Um, I tell people that we did not lose our language overnight. We didn't lose it in five to ten years. This is a process that has been going on for 200 years, and it's taken its time. Um, one of the things that I heard during the festival is that back in 1999, we had 55 fluent speakers. That's 20 years ago, we had 55 fluent speakers. Um, and before that time, we had hundreds, and you know, it, it took over a hundred years to get to this point, and I don't think that I'm gonna see it come back in my lifetime, but I'm okay with that. Um, I'm okay with that if there's others, you know, working with us, if we can try to help others. Um, but one word is important, and that's all it takes. One word, you know, turns into two words, it turns into a sentence. Um, that's something that I tell people when I teach them, you know. Um, it's such a daunting task to think about when, if we really just step back. But I like to tell people that are learning them, don't feel discouraged and don't feel like you're not making a difference because you might have just said a word today that hasn't been spoken in 50 years. Or you might have said a word that might never be spoken again if you hadn't said it today. What is your favorite thing about your job? A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. Is it because there are so many things that you love about your job? Yeah. Um, is it a great environment that you work in? It's a good environment. I have a really great team. Um, we're all supportive of each other, and I, I just like that we're working towards changing the future um, in a positive way. So I'm, you know. I always work with my staff and we're always trying to come up with ways to include not only language but culture and what we're doing and um, we're trying to think of ways to appease people in a, a better way like technology wise and getting the language more out there we're you know we're trying to adapt and I just I I think that it's great that we get to learn the language and teach it to others. All right, so tell me about your son. How old is he now? He's four months old. And his name is? Atlas. Atlas. Yeah. See, I love that. I think mean, that yeah. name is fantastic. It's a pretty strong name. It's a great name. I mean, <laughs> yeah. great, I mean great name. It always mm -hmm. makes me think of holding, you know, holding the earth right oh, there, yeah. right? Yeah. And so uh, that's really cool. So I actually got to meet him. Was that your first time? It wasn't the first time out with the baby. But it was, it was first like the first time here. back here. Yes. So during my installment ceremony, mm -hmm. uh, I got to meet Katie and her husband and Atlas. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool um, to see him there. And so tell, tell me about how you interact with him in the language, Atlas and language. I just talk to him. I just, um, it sounds like rambling. It, you know, it, it, I know he doesn't know what's going on, but as long as he's hearing it, and I'm, it's more for me. I'm trying to get in the habit of speaking to him in sock. So I'll just, um, you know, when it's me and him and we're just at the house, I'll describe what he's doing in sock, and I'll, I'll make up a bunch of songs for him in sock. Um, you know, there's um, songs I'll sing to him when I'm burping him or, um, with little toys that he likes, um, just trying to find ways to just keep saying things over and over to him and getting him into a routine of hearing uh, this. So I'm going to try to do my part to help out the language department when we do these these 15 minute interviews with different de department directors. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to ask you today. I'm going to ask you for a word or a phrase mm -hmm. of the week. 
Okay. And so we're going to say it, you're gonna t we're going to try to teach it to people that are listening and try to teach me too. Okay. So try to think of something you haven't taught me yet or told me about yet. Oh, okay. Let's see. Do you have a topic that you're thinking of? Um, so, well, I mean, it's, it's choose one that's like, um, so we say good morning, it's maybe Wapin. So that's a good one to learn. Mm -hmm. How about good evening or good night? Good night is Minwi to Becky. Minwi to Becky. Mm hmm. Minwi to Becky. Win, minwi to Becky. Uh huh. With like a B sound. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Minwi to Becky. Mm hmm. And that's good. Good night. night. Uh huh. That's good night. So when, when it's dark outside. All right. When it's dark, that means when it's dark outside. Uh huh. Good night. Yeah. yeah. Nighttime. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Well, I want to thank Katie for being here with us today. And how can people contact you if they want to visit with you about the, our culture or language or want to get involved? Uh, they can call the main phone number, 918-968-3526, um, and then my extension is 1076. Very good. Thank you for being with us today. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Talk Sock, and we'll talk to you next week. The video for this podcast can be found on the nation's YouTube channel at youtube.com and search for Sack and Fox Nation. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast. Kiwawiyama nefla. Yanih.